welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a really exciting collab video with my YouTube friend Danielle Schmidt and I'm so so excited to be filming the bad beauty tag with her. Now I hadn't seen this one and we were trying to think of ideas and she came up with it and I was like uh yeah I love doing tag videos because it's just a fun easy way to get to know each other and also have your subscriber friends get to know you so I love doing tags if you have not been tagged in this video definitely consider yourself tagged I will leave the original video down in the description box I know it was two ladies that created it but I can't remember off the top of my head but I will leave the links below and of course I will leave the link to Danielle's channel down below as well as her video and you guys should check her out I believe she uploads every single day I'm pretty sure she does because I think she said that in a video of hers and she's cool she's really into like using what she has she has a lot of really creative ideas and she loves color as well so definitely check her out tell her I said hi she is so so close to a thousand subscribers so if you guys want to support her I would definitely encourage it other than that let's get into this tag video and Danielle thanks again so much for collabing with me okay guys this tag video is tough so I'm going to do my best to answer these questions, but whew. So the first question is, what is the worst product you've ever used? Now I was trying to brainstorm what to say for this because I feel like there's been so many bad products over the years. One that very recently comes to mind that was really disappointing to me personally was the Pat McGrath Labs Rose Levian mini palette that she came out with. I'll throw up a picture so you guys know which one I'm talking about. But honestly, I have all of the bigger Pat McGrath palettes and the minis just did not compare. I know I've heard a lot of people say they really enjoy it, but for me, it was definitely a hard pass. I feel like her bigger shadows have definitely cooler shades and the formulation is a lot better so that definitely came to mind that new NARS foundation they came out with was really 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 matte so it made my skin look like it was dehydrated I also don't like the new Bobbi Brown foundation I had purchased that when I was in Vegas Ooh, that totally dried up my skin yeah there's just so many products that come to mind it's so hard to pick one thinking back on products I've tried the Chanel can de Chanel bronzer that's supposed to be a universal color it is not a universal color it's way too light for me um, also the butter bronzer by physicians formula the color match is totally based on very fair skin tone so there's a lot of bad makeup out there I feel like I could go on and on and on oh and of course how could I forget the subculture palette subculture palette was by far one of the worst makeup products because I love ABH's formula and that particular palette really made me question ABH as a brand because it was such a different formulation from all of their eyeshadow palettes that had come out previously. So yeah, the uh, subculture palette was very rough. And every time I see somebody that's bought it because they want to see if it's as bad as everyone says it is, it ends up being as bad as everyone says it is. And I'm like, ooh, why? Why do people keep buying the subculture palette? That was a rough palette. Number two is, what is the first sign that a product is going to be bad? Hmm, ooh. Is that saying like a product that's gone bad or like when I see advertising, it's bad? I guess I could answer it both ways. The first sign for me that a product is going to be bad really depends on the brand. And, uh... That really is a really good indication to me. I feel like, especially if you have been using makeup as long as I have or been watching YouTube as long as I have, you kind of have an idea of your go-to brands versus your brands that you're like, eh, better keep the receipt just in case type deal. As far as if a, like a product's actually going bad, I haven't actually had a whole lot of products go bad on me, so it's tough for me to actually answer that question. I did declutter my Kat Von D Shade and Light Contouring Palette, and I just felt like it wasn't applying the same way as it used to when I got it new. I felt like it was patchy. I don't know, it just felt weird, so that's kind of what made me think it had maybe gone bad. So I think the easiest way for me to tell if a product has gone bad is if it applies weird, different from the way it used to. So hopefully I answered that question correctly. Number three, what brand puts out the worst products in your opinion? Ooh, that's a tough one. I think the... I think the brand that puts out the worst products for me is honestly Tarte. I feel like Too Faced is pretty high up there, but I feel like Too Faced does have some hits. Like their eyeshadow formulas, their newer palettes have been pretty decent. I've heard good things about the Clover palette. I did think the Chocolate Gold Bar palette was pretty good. But Tarte, I feel like, is very ashy, really caters to... 
I don't know, a very, very light skin tone. I think they try to act like they are catering to tan, medium, dark complexions, but I really don't see a huge push there. A lot of their blushes are really more ashy tone, not really suitable for dark, dark skin. And I don't even know if Tarte makes any bronzers. If they do, I haven't really seen any that work with my complexion, and I cannot find a shade that matches my skin tone. Uh, when it comes to Tarte's foundation, I've bought quite a few of their foundations just because I've heard good things, but I promise you, I can't find a color that matches me. So if you guys want to color match me and send me a Tarte foundation that you think will work for my skin, I'll happily try it, but I don't think one exists because it's always the wrong undertone or it's too light for me. Okay, number four. Would you rather have eyeshadow that won't blend or foundation that won't match you no matter what you do? So I think I would rather have eyeshadow that won't blend. I thought about this question a little bit earlier when I was thinking about what my answers were gonna be for this video and I was like, maybe I'll just go with foundation because I could blend all the way down to my neck. But I was like, but Karen, if it's like 50 shades lighter, your hands will be a different color. And there's really no way to fake it till you make it through that. I feel like an eyeshadow that won't blend, you can just kind of like press it on. You don't always really need to have to blend that much. I feel like you can get away with not blending your eyeshadow, but your foundation being the wrong shade is like a, that's like a real cringe because especially when you're really tan, you can really, really tell. So I would go with eyeshadow that won't blend. <laughs> Number five, what is the worst perfume smell ever in your opinion? That's tough because I think perfume is a very personal choice and so many different perfumes smell so differently on different people, like stuff I really like, sometimes people don't really like and vice versa. For me, I really don't like very heavy scents. Not even the masculine ones, but I just hate really heavy florals. I know some people are really into heavy florals. Like sometimes I love black opium, but sometimes I'm just like, oh my God, get it away from me. It's giving me a headache. So it's really perceptive and it's really hard for me to answer because uh, most of the perfumes I own, I really like how they smell. So number six, if you had a friend whose makeup looked bad, would you tell them? Mm, that's a tough one because you don't want to hurt people's feelings. I think that is important to keep in mind. Would I want somebody to tell me if my makeup looked bad? That's a dangerous question to answer on YouTube because I feel like there's always somebody trying to say something to you on the internet. But it really depends on your level of friendship. Like if it was a really good friend that I knew was like a genuine person, I would appreciate it. Especially like when I appreciate it when people tell me when I have lipstick on my teeth because I constantly have lipstick on my teeth. So I think it just depends on the level of friendship and closeness. If it was like an acquaintance, I mean, like I, I'm really not gonna go out of my way and like try and, you know, be tactful about it. Obviously, the way I apply my makeup isn't how everyone else applies their makeup. So I don't know, I think beauty is perception and you know, some people do really think they look good with the makeup they have. So who the hell am I to tell them that they shouldn't be doing their makeup the way they do it? But yeah, if it was a good friend and uh, it was like a bad match or something, yeah, I would I would definitely want to tell them like, hey, uh, I think that foundation like oxidized on your face or something because it's making you look a lot darker than you are or something like that. You know, a nice way to say something to somebody. Number seven, have you ever purchased makeup you knew was bad, i.e. fake makeup, rip off makeup, and tried to pass it off as good? I don't even know who would... <laughs> Uh, no, I've never done that. I don't really have a lot of access to fake makeup. I know there's like that whole Shop Hush app thing, which, I mean, I'm pretty against Shop Hush. I do think it's a little bit strange that they're like ripping off other people's palette ideas, but it seems like the YouTube community has really like embraced them. I'm a little bit confused because I feel like it's because they're sending out free product to a lot of influencers. I mean, I really want to know how they're bankrolling that operation because they're sending out so much makeup to very, very small YouTubers and very, very big YouTubers. And I see their ads playing on YouTube all the time. So they're like really saturating the market with their name. And sometimes I feel like when you watch YouTube and you're a content creator, you kind of get that, um, what is that? It's like, a, there's like a psychological term for like, it's not like when you're t held hostage, but it's like, 
one of those things where like everyone's doing it so you're like well maybe it's not so bad and like nobody's really like questioning it they're just like well this really big youtuber i like thinks it's fine so i think it's fine and then the next person's like well they did it so i can do it and so on and so forth so i don't know that always bothers me and i don't know people say like hey it's so great that we don't have to spend as much money on the real deal but i feel like that's such a rip because I've been seeing so many shop hush videos so i did go on the website or their app and i was like looking through because i'm so curious to see if the bad habit palettes are actually as good as the real deal i haven't quite cracked yet so we'll see maybe i will i don't know i just that was a long-winded answer i'm sorry guys i just i haven't ever bought fake makeup and i don't think i ever will what makeup smells do you think are bad I don't, I'm not very sensitive to smell. I know there are people that are very sensitive to smell. So like, for example, people hate how the butter bronzer smells. I mean, it's definitely a strong fragrance, but it doesn't bother me. I know the Huda Beauty Foundation does have a fragrance as well. It's there, but it's not anything that like turns me off to the point where I wouldn't use it. The one smell I literally cannot stand, I think it smells so bad, is the Sunday Riley Flora Oil. Ugh! Woo, it's nasty. It smells very like rosehip seed and oh, I can't. It's such a gross smell. I can only wear that oil at night because if I wear it during the day, I can smell it underneath my makeup and it's just like, I'm like, oh, can other people smell that? Like, it's a good oil, but if other people can smell that, they probably think it's gross. You guys, oh my gosh. By the way, total side note, I was, my husband asked me for some face lotion today and I was like trying to be a good person. Usually I just give him like whatever. And I was like, oh, I should try my Juno oil on him. And I was using my Juno oil on him and he had something in his eye and he like flicked my bottle of Juno oil all over my carpet. And I was just like, and I was so bummed. Yeah, Juno oil is expensive. So bad makeup experience that I wanted to tell you guys about. Let me know any of your makeup disasters that have taken place recently where I was just like, oh my god, I could kill you. Okay, number nine. Is there any product that has a smell so bad you can't use it? If anything smelled so bad I couldn't use it, I wouldn't have it. <laughs> so nothing comes to mind. Sorry. Number ten. Have you ever bought a foundation that you knew would be bad for your skin type? then continued to use it or tried to make it work even though it looked bad. Yeah, for sure I've done it. I have dry skin, but I love a matte foundation. And I even use matte foundations in the winter time, which is usually a pretty big no-no for dry skin. The one foundation I feel like I kept trying to use is a new Bobbi Brown foundation I had mentioned previously. I bought it in Vegas and I didn't have the receipt or so I thought, which I actually found the receipt recently, so I'm going to take that back. But it's so dehydrating on my skin I just feel like it's like sucking the moisture out of my skin so it would be a great foundation for oily skin girls but for me it's just too drying and the new NARS one as well was just so drying and I love NARS so I was really bummed it didn't work for me because I literally try every single NARS foundation and that one was just so drying so again if you have oily skin those two would be my go-to recommendations for oily skin girls but they were bad and so yeah I did try to continue to use them I didn't finish them I did return the NARS one and I'm going to return the Bobbi Brown one number 11 what color do you think looks bad on you like eyeshadow wise or just in general I mean I think crazy colored lips look really bad on me because they make my teeth look really yellow as far as eyeshadow I don't think anything personally looks bad on me I just think I'm not the greatest at doing eye looks with really dark jewel tones like I can't do an all black smoky eye I feel like it just makes my eyes look really really small because I have really small eyelids anyway and then when I do a black smoky eye, I feel like it makes my eyes look even tinier so I do like to avoid that number 12 what type of makeup item looks bad on everyone I don't know that would me the assumption that all makeup is created equally for every skin tone and that's not true so that's really hard for me to answer i do think that there are people with my skin tone that can really pull off a concealer lip you know when the lipstick is like super super nude 
Personally, I don't think I can pull off that lip trend, but I know some people can, and I know I definitely tried to pull it off when I was younger. So I don't think it's like the most flattering look. I definitely like a nude more like this one. The one I have on today is Kat Von D's Lolita. And if anyone is ever looking for a nude lipstick, this is like my go-to foolproof color. And it's super comfy as well. So yeah, sorry, I don't really have any idea what is the one thing that looks bad on everyone. So yeah, that is everything. Okay guys, that is everything for the bad beauty tag. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you so much again, Danielle, for suggesting this video as our collab. I will go ahead and link her video down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to her channel. And if you are coming over from Danielle's channel, thank you so much for sticking with me. I hope you guys will subscribe to my channel. I do upload every other day. So you do get a ton of content from me. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. <laughs>